Hey there folks, it's Glenn with the almost world famous Cactus Atlas and today I'm camping in the region known as the Devil's Garden at Arches National Park. All right, so for you new folks here, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of these campground experience videos that we do. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of my campsite, show you some amenities, the surrounding area, then we'll do something fun like a hike, maybe a nighttime excursion into the desert looking for critters, and maybe this time some nighttime photography. So there's lots to look forward to. Stick around, I'm excited. Okay, so my site is Site 51. I booked it a few weeks ago because someone must have canceled and there weren't really many choices, but I lucked out because this campsite has got it all. As with every other national park campground I've stayed at, you're gonna get a picnic table. And my particular site has a really nice level place to put a tent that's kind of back in this little alcove of uh, what I assume are pinion pines and shrubs. Every site also comes with a fire ring kind of elevated off the ground with an attached grate. Every campsite either has a pull-off or a driveway, and I've seen some pretty large vehicles back here. One that I believe was a Class A. One thing this campground got right is the privacy factor. So you could see my neighbors there, that picnic table. That's site number 52, and that's where I think that Class A was parked. Um, and if you scan over this way, this is my site, Site 51, blocked completely from view from the other campsite. And then that gray SUV marks where uh, Site 50 would be, and their campsite is often that little um, orchard of pinion pines, like way back in there. So I do not have any sight lines to any of my neighbors here. I love that. So standing in my site, I noticed lots of paths and walkways where other feet have been, official trails and unofficial trails like this one. Just a quick 10 seconds later, crossing through this little area of pinion pines, I emerge into the backyard of Site 51, right up on the Devil's Garden. And everywhere in this area, everybody seems to have their own private rock too. So these things are relatively simple to scale and we can get a view from up above of the campground. I'm not willing to quote what those sites across the way are, but all of them back up against those rocks and have nice privacy and division by pinion pine. And there's a big group campsite where that guy is doing that maintenance thing with a golf cart. That's uh, one of the group sites. When we get on foot, I'll get you the name and the number. And those folks over there also have like access to a public trail that goes out to a, something called Sand Dune Arch and Broken Arch. It just cuts back into that area, which I think we may explore that as part of this. That would make sense. I'm really enjoying my view from up here and filming this episode from up high, but I think it's now time to go down there and get on foot and we'll get an up close look at some of these sites. If I'm being fair though, I do want to make a note while I'm thinking of it. If you're looking for like a completely isolated backcountry experience, this is not it. You have construction vehicles driving around, the sound of generators, um, lots of human noise. So what I believe this campground does in general is there's like one entrance, you come in one, um, down one road, like a two-way traffic road. There are campsites on either side of that until you get to this loop then it swings back around so you can get out. So this is the end of the line, so to speak. But also, like I said, the closest to the Devil's Garden proper. Amy and I devised a system for rating campsites, and don't worry, this isn't really a campsite review per se. I'm not gonna go site by site and look at every single one. But when one really gets my attention, I'll throw a rating up there. I'm gonna give this one five cacti. And this here is site 53. And this is an interesting site. I mean, seriously, check this out. You do have to haul your stuff up this really small hill. So maybe one disadvantage, but you are way back here. And you got flat ground to pitch a tent up against rocks and pinion pine and the same access to that beautiful devil's garden in the background. Site 53, five cacti all day long. And if I could go higher, I might. <laughs> Okay, so this might be my first site where I'm gonna have a gripe, site 49. It's very not level. It's on a slope, a 
whole way through and through. And even though there's a nice area right behind here separating the, these two campsites, that sign says no camping beyond that point. So your really only option, I think, is to put your tent on that sloped ground. So for that reason, the only thing that's gonna give this one a two is the scenery and the access to that area back there. But there's nothing worse than camping on really sloped ground like that. And this is site 48. This one has a uh, driveway, probably not suitable for a class A, but I'm gonna guess a 20, maybe the 30 foot rig could get back there. And it's a really nice compact campsite. You could tent camp here. Um, if your tent's small enough, you got some level area here, but beyond that, it starts to slope up. But it's workable and it's got beautiful scenery and really up nice and close to these rocks that you could climb. So if you have a large group, like maybe a family gathering, Juniper Basin group campsite, this looks radical. I love this. Um, it's site 47, and I'm assuming this encompasses this whole area with multiple tables and fire rings and tucked away behind this. I fear this is gonna be a long episode. I promise we're not gonna look at every single site, but at least on this loop, I mean, come on. Site 46, another one with a driveway. So if you're in a camper or an RV, I'm not gonna say a class A, cause I don't know for sure. This would be a great one. Yep, your standard amenities, of course. But one thing I love about this that I'm seeing is if you have a small enough tent, and when I say small, you could probably get like a, easily a six person tent back here probably bigger is this very level shaded area sandwiched in between the sandstone. Okay, this is easily five cacti. Okay, so what I think would be site 44 right there and then site 45 right next door are probably suitable for small campers or small tents. Um, these are a little close for my taste. So unless you knew the people over here, um, I'm gonna give these three, and it pains me to do that because of the scenery, but if I'm like trying to measure against other factors, I have to be fair. And then starting here once again with site 44, the loop comes around where I'm staying, and then you end up over here, which is the last number that I've counted so far, Site 54, I'd say the last official one on the loop. So the reason why my educated guess is that Site 54 is the last of the sites is because when you come over here, now you're on 43, which is just like 54. Same review, two, two, and that last one I'm gonna give a one for a specific reason. And just so you know, I am fair, and I see both sides of the coin here. Site 41 is the one that I gave a one. Um, and the reason for that is, look what's right next to you. Like, five dumpsters, which by the way, is where you can put all your trash. Very convenient, but right now the wind's not blowing in the direction where I can smell it, but you're not gonna tell me that sometimes being downwind of that ain't gonna stink. I tend to do these things in the middle of the day, because I'm so paranoid there's gonna be a day where I walk in filming and there's someone in there. I'm gonna freak them out. All clear, so you're gonna get a tour of the men's restroom. I've been in here, I spent the night here last night, so I'm really gonna be here a total of three nights, but starting to film on day two. These are the sinks. They've been very clean, running water, very good water pressure, um, mirrors, urinals, and a couple toilets that have just been freshly cleaned. And also another really handy dandy thing is the sink. And not only is it for washing dishes, it's also to drink out of. All right, so that was a very healthy dose of this campground and probably what I'm thinking is gonna be the best section. What I'm gonna do next is get into my car and we have to go make a couple stops. One is the visitor center because I need to get maps. Um, I was hasty and didn't stop and I regret it now because I don't have cell phone service, which is good for you to note. You're not gonna have much luck with that out here. It's very problematic. But anyway, we're gonna hit the road and on the way out, we'll take a look at the other campsites that uh, line the street. All right, we're taking to the road. So I'm driving now on that loop that uh, we extensively toured 
what I think is probably gonna be the best part of this uh, campground. Because I drove in last night and I saw the other campsite. So that's what we're gonna do, do now is that I'm going to drive the remainder of this drive out. We're going backwards and we're approximately at site 40, I think, and then 39 and so on and so forth. There'll be sites on either side of the road and those really bumpy gutter things, be very careful for those, they're, they're rough. But anyway, um, I'm just gonna comment, see if I see any standout things. So far, the sites on the main drive-in are very similar to other ones we saw. A lot of really nice driveways, like that will accommodate campers, like you see straight ahead of me right now. And there's that really deep gutter thing. On the right, there's like lots of great sites too. Uh, pretty decently long driveways. Um, hesitant to say class A type of driveways, but once again, by the time Amy edits this, we'll know for sure. And all the sites are beautiful. I mean, they're really up against all of the, uh, the same features, the rocks. The only difference would be you're gonna have neighbors like right across from you, you know, on the street and sight lines to people. So maybe not quite as private as the other ones, but you know, at a cursory look like this, this might be a class A size right there, by the way. So when we come out of the campground though, you get out of these rock features and it's a little bit more open over here and a lot more hilly and I see a lot of sloped campsites. So be wary folks, be wary. You know, some of the numbers here, I am looking at site uh, 10 right there, or site 16, I'm sorry, and then site 15 on the right. So if you're looking at a map and trying to figure this out, I mean, these are all pretty sites compared to other campgrounds, but I could say with confidence, I think that loop that I'm on is the ticket. And off, off to the right, I see sites for 10 campers and slightly sloped, slightly. But I see a lot of the same amenities too, bathrooms, dumpsters, and it's all up against the Devil's Playground. Here in the earlier sites, I would say, these look like they have potential. On sloped hills, that's site three, and then site two, and, and then site one. So I'm here at the end of the campground, but that's just a quick drive through. And as we come out, look at the scenery here at the Devil's Playground. Seriously. Okay, so the next destination is the Visitor Center, and I'm gonna probably just capture some of the landscape as I drive to give you guys just a taste. This isn't the part of the park that's really known for the arches, but this is the Devil's Garden um, trailhead. And look at how full, oh my God, this parking lot is. Now that I'm leaving my little sanctuary, um, they, this is reservation only, by the way, and I just realized something. You have to have a printed copy of your campground receipt for getting back in, because I don't have a reservation to the park, but your campground reservation gives you a reservation into the park, so I'm all good, but um, this is really gross. <laughs> it's really crowded. And I'm just enthralled with this scenery. Um, the Devil's Garden. Amy had to train me because, and I, I wonder how many times I did it. I kept saying the Devil's Playground over and over and over. And she had to correct me and she said, start rehearsing it. Devil's Garden, Devil's Garden. So I think I've done a good job so far, Amy. I hope so. And from the outside, this visitor center here looks huge. So we're gonna go inside and check it out. When I was back here in 2004, I didn't go into the visitor center. So this is a first for me, but once again, big word of advice when you come to visit here, once you get in here, highly recommend you pop in here, grab a map, maybe buy some t-shirts because you're gonna want those, I'm sure, and get your business done here so you don't have to come back and waste time. So this visitor center, I would say, is next level. Um, in terms of how they designed that, that window in the back with the views. Um, that was my favorite aspect of it, is seeing that frame by the window. And of course, the whole display on how arches were formed and all of the intricate things they built. Amazing and probably one of the best uh, gift shops I've seen at a national park. There's so much that I want to buy in there. But man, was the visitor center crowded. Understandably so, because that's probably the last stop that people make on the way out. So I'm gonna go put my camera away and get my wallet out. 
It's now mid-afternoon on my last day here at the park. I'm gonna be camping here one more night tonight. Um, I probably look really pale because I've been slathering on um, the sunblock because I've just been getting burnt, but it's already starting to wear off. Anyway, the clouds are starting to gather and it hasn't really rained since I've been here, but it affects the lighting when it gets too cloudy and right now it's beautiful. So I thought I would take you guys on a quick adventure in the vicinity of our campground. Okay, so here's the plan guys. I'm looking at the map that I'm bringing with me. I'm at the Devil's Garden campground and see that little black dot? That's actually a loop. That's where we're camping at site 51 and you see that green dash coming out of that? That's the trail right next to my site. Um, I want to go down, hike, make a right, go down to Sand Dune Arch, turn around, Broken Arch, Tapestry Arch, and then that comes out right next to the restroom. This is fun because you get to see the area right behind the campground, right where my tent is, just feet away from here. So we're exploring that region so you'll get a taste of it. And you'll see all these features known as fins, those thin walls of sandstone. More on that in a minute. Not many people hike back here, I can tell you. Being the guy that's camped next to this, and I've been here at different times of the day, people just trickle through here. So if you want seclusion at Arches, I think you'll find it here, even in busy times like July. The National Park map they give you didn't specify the trail lengths of all the different ways you could attack this. I'm going to assume the total journey, I'm gonna guess one and a half to three miles, my best guess, but nothing excessive though. I just love areas like this where you can go climb and play on sandstone. It's really fantastic stuff. And the shapes are very uh, relaxing to look at. Lots of round edges, cool lines. It's a magnificent place. Yeah, when you come to arches, you're gonna see many, many arches. So by the point you get over here, you might be thinking, oh my God, geez, another arch? I don't think that way. I'm, I'm always delighted to see them, but um, the hike through here alone is worth it despite the arch. I would be a buyer if, uh, if this was all there was. They've placed some rock cairns so it's easy to find your way. Not that you'd need them because it's pretty clear where people have walked. Hmm, now I'm wondering, I'm second guessing myself. I'm wondering if I screwed things up and I'm thinking back to a decision I did decided to make which was oh I don't need to bring my phone even though I downloaded an all trails map I don't really need it for something this simple huh <laughs> so this could be a lesson for you I'm just gonna have faith that I didn't mess up it's a little bit more than I bargained for too in terms of features that you have to navigate and climb. Some of this like slick sand on top of the stone, it's a little scary at times. I hope, uh, you know, even if I don't go the right way, this is freaking awesome. All right, I find myself in between these really large fins these big structures where you could see water has smoothed out a lot of the sandstone. And I'm still seriously questioning where am I going? But my thought is I'm going to go to the bottom here because it looks up like I'm getting to the bottom of whatever this is. I'm not going to lose any more elevation and I have lots to climb up. We have to go way back up there. And then the campground's in sight. So if I screwed up, I'll just have to go back up there, but it doesn't matter because this is so interesting. 
My only fear is that this is part of a trail I'm gonna be doing tomorrow and I don't wanna like double up on the footage. Oh my God, I did it exactly right. So I didn't screw up. Thank the powers that be. So if I wanna go back to the campground, I could, but we're gonna do this broken arch. And this is that little spur going to the sand dune arch, which is further the way away than it looked on the map. I see people way out there. So it's somewhere over the, actually I see a parking lot. So there must be a pull off for it. All right, let's do this. And that is the uh, jungle that we crossed all the way over it, clean over all those rocks through like a maze. It's an adventure. A thought occurred to me just now that I don't, I don't know if you would hike this on foot and experience what I just experienced. Unless you're camping here, probably few would do it. Because there's not as much incentive to do it on foot because you can drive and pull off and walk shorter distances and cover time more efficiently, of course. This area is spectacular. I feel raindrops. It looks like the spectacle is somewhere in here. So maybe it's a small one. Look how pink the sand is here. This is the most beautiful spot I've seen in recent memory. Pink sand between these giant rocks. It doesn't end. Sand dune arch. Okay, so that is quite possibly my new favorite here at Arches. This uh, pink landscape, the sand to get there. It's like almost like a holy place of sorts. It's so weird. Um, and the arch, like right there over that pink sand. All right, now the next one to start looping back would be going to Broken Arch. You can see not too far off, you got some downpours and like the clouds just keep getting thicker and thicker, thus leading to that. I think I've got a wee little time left, but <laughs> I don't know how much more I want to bet. All right, so now, broken arch. I assume the way the signs are set up, it almost means the campground would be faster to get to going back. But we're gonna do this right, we're gonna try. All right, we're nearing this. Arch, I assume this is gonna be broken arch. And then, hopefully we really do head back. I'll check it out, a free needle threading today. Gonna get it for free. When you're out in the Southwest in open sky country, you really see storms for what they are and how fast they can form and things like this. I know what they can do. I'm not worried about like lightning strikes at the moment. It's more just a heavy downpour. Could hang out under the arch if I had to though. Speaking of that, we're here at the arch. I want to make a note here. There's, this is an arch. It arches where there's not a single person here. I'm completely alone, at least for a few minutes, I think. Okay, so you know this is here now. I'm just going to continue the trail because of the impending doom that I feel on my back. So we'll just thread the needle in first person view. This might be a little tough actually. Someone made some steps, at least, to get you started. But after that, you're on your own. Oof. It's a workout, man. Ooh, a sign and lots of wind again. I observed that at every uh, arch, wind was, whips through these things. Look at that. 
That is a beautiful arch. It's better seen from this side, in fact, I'd say. All right, there's a storm of brewing. Feel the rain. It's starting. I gotta find a place to hide if I need to. Oh, shoot. See? <laughs> so here's the trail's end. And it started the rain pretty good. Not a downpour yet. You can see it's wet here on the sidewalk. And I arrived truly, truly like one minute, two minutes before this started or else it would have been a problem. I would have had to figure out how to protect all my equipment. It's a lesson to be learned though. Well, I took advantage of the afternoon to go run errands because I was not sure if it was gonna rain more. It really didn't. That was about the worst that you saw of it. And uh, went and got ice and some supplies. And now I'm gonna take us out to that last arch. I'm, I'm risking it, but it seems like the atmosphere has calmed down for the most part now. So even though it's still overcast, I think we'll be okay. And here, is our decision point. We have 300 yards to go. I'm wondering if this is view from a distance kind of arch. Tapestry arch. It is so, the colors of the desert are just so amazing. The red and the green blend so well together. This is the strangest thing. You know, I thought we were gonna be going off that way somewhere, but now we're kind of heading back the direction we came from. Oh my God, that scared me. There's a deer right there with a baby deer. Look at that. that gave me a startle because you're not expecting it. You're just walking and you look up and you see eyes. That's what it is, is just the eyes. Oh, I think I see the arch actually. So I don't know how this trail is supposed to work. I think this is a view one view of the arch from far but let me show you from up here i have to believe that's it right there it's way up on the side of that uh formation and the trail i guess i don't know does it wind all the way around over there and just a note there's nobody back here other than silence and deer and me It's the morning of my departure here at Site 51, Devil's Garden Campground, Wednesday, July the 27th. I would say this camping experience here at Arches National Park is a must do. Um, number one, you get to avoid the restricted time check-ins, so you have access 24 seven. You don't have to arrive at a specific time. And you can explore these regions that virtually nobody other than us campers explore miles of it. As you saw yesterday in that very rushed, stormy episode, <laughs> high adventure. So, Devil's Garden Campground, Arches National Park, an absolute experience that I highly, highly recommend.